Hey everybody, this is Paul. Welcome back as we continue to work in the binary search tree project. So in this tutorial, we're going to create a print function that will show us the contents of our tree. So to do this, I'm going to create two function prototypes. So first in the public section, I'm going to create a prototype with a void return type. And I'm going to call this function print in order. And then I'll just do an opening and closing parentheses and a semicolon. So we don't need to pass in any arguments from our main function. We should be able to call the print in order function. And what it will do is it will go and look inside of our tree and it will print the key values in order from lowest key value to greatest key value. So the next thing I'm going to do is in the private section, I'm going to create another function prototype and I'm going to call this print in order and then I'll add a private here because we only want this function to be accessed by the class itself. We don't want this function to be accessed by the main program. And for this function we're going to need to pass in a node pointer and we'll just call that PTR for pointer. So first let's go ahead and define our print in order function. We'll just go ahead and copy that and we'll go to our binary search tree.cpp file and at the end here we'll go ahead and paste that in. We want to let our program know that we're referencing this from the binary search tree class. So we type in BST colon colon. Go ahead and get rid of that semicolon there. Do an opening and closing curly brace. And we're just going to have the print in order function when it's called from the main program, start its traversal at the root. So we're going to just call the print in order private function. And we're going to pass in the root pointer as the initial pointer value inside of that function. So now let's just go ahead and copy this and we'll paste that down here. And this is also going to be a void return type. We're defining it from the binary search tree class. And instead of root, we're passing in a node pointer and we'll just name that PTR. Get rid of the semicolon here and then we'll go ahead and define what we want our print in order private function to do. So this is going to recursively traverse the tree in order from lowest value to highest value. So the first thing we're going to do in the print in order private function is we're going to check to see if there's anything in the tree. So we're just going to say if root is not equal to null, that means that there's something in the tree, then we'll go ahead and write some code to take care of that case. If that's not the case, if the tree is empty, then we're going to catch that with this else condition here. And we'll just go ahead and print a message to the screen that lets us know if we try to print the contents of an empty tree, we'll just have it print the message, the tree is empty. And we'll put a new line there and a semicolon. So in here, we're going to put the code for a tree that is not empty. So the first thing we're going to say is we're going to say if the left pointer of the current node that we're looking at, if that is pointing to something, then we're going to take care of that in this condition and we'll do some code in here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to print the contents of the current node. And so we're just going to see out the key value inside of that node and then we'll print out a space as well. And then we're going to do another if statement checking to see if the right pointer is pointing to something or not. And if it is, we'll go ahead and run some code inside of this statement here. What I'm doing is I'm setting up the framework for the in order traversal here. If you remember from the in order traversal video that I made, the first rule was to go left if possible. So this right here is checking to see if it's possible to go left. If it is, then what we're going to do is we're going to recursively call the print in order private function and we're going to pass in the left pointer of the current node that we're looking at. So this part right here now is the go left part of the in order traversal that I outlined a few tutorials ago. This would be step two, print the current key value. This would be step three, which is go right if possible. So to go right if possible, this part right here is going to check to see if it's possible to go right. And if it is possible, we're just going to recursively call the print in order private function and we're going to pass in the right pointer to traverse down the current node's right pointer. And we'll end that with a semicolon. And that is essentially the print in order private function. So now assuming that I've coded everything correctly, I didn't make any mistakes, we should be able to add a bunch of nodes using our add node function that we've created here and here. And then once all of our nodes are added to the tree, we should be able to call the print in order function, this one right here from our main program, 
which will start at the root and then it will recursively go through all the values in the tree and print them in order from lowest to greatest key value. So let's go ahead and go to our main.cpp file and give this a try. So for this demonstration, I'm just simply going to create an integer array that can hold 16 values because that's how many keys I want to place inside of my tree for this tutorial. So I'm just going to name my array tree keys and I'm going to make it a size 16 and then I'm just going to paste the values that I said that I was going to use in the adding nodes tutorial that I created. So I'm just going to to paste those in from another file I have open here and these are the numbers that I want to add to my tree and this is the order that I'm going to add them to the tree this is the same order that I've outlined in my previous tutorials so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my binary search tree object so to do that I'm just going to type BST and then I'm going to name it my tree so I'll name it my tree. So now I have a binary search tree called my tree. Initially, it's just going to be empty. And so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add the numbers inside of my tree keys array to this new tree. So let's go ahead and do a print statement so we can see what's going on. So we're going to print the message. It's going to say printing the tree in order. And I'll just put a new line here and I'll just say before adding numbers and then another new line and then I'll just put a semicolon here and then we'll go ahead and call the print in order function so we're going to print the key values of my tree here by saying my tree dot print in order and so this should tell us that the tree is empty the first time we call it the next thing I'm going to do I'll just go ahead and copy this and I'll paste it down here and I'll say instead of before adding numbers I'm going to change this to after adding numbers. Up top here, I'll go ahead and add the numbers since that print statement says after adding numbers. I guess I'll add the numbers up above here. And so I'll just do this in a for loop. And I'll just say for, create a new integer variable called i, set it initially equal to zero, starting at the very first index, the zero index of the array. And as long as i is less than 16, we're just going to take the values from this array that I have up above and we're going to place those values in the tree in the order that I have them listed in the array. So then to finish the for loop, we're just going to say I plus plus. And then all we're really going to do is we're just going to add those nodes to the tree. So we're just going to say my tree dot add leaf. And then we want to pass in the correct value. So in here, we're just going to grab the current array element that it's looking at as it's going through this for loop. So we'll just say tree keys and we want the ith element. And so then we'll just go ahead and do a semicolon there. So this for loop should add all of the keys that I have listed here in this tree keys array. So we're adding them starting at the number 50 and the very last one we add will be the number 80. So now if I didn't mess anything up here, everything should work perfectly and we should see a nice example of the tree, what it looks like before we add the numbers, and then we'll go ahead and add the numbers and see what the tree looks like after the numbers are added. Oh, I guess I have to do one more thing. I have to make sure that I print in order one more time afterwards so we can actually see what's going on. And then we'll just go ahead and end that with a semicolon. So if everything works correctly, after we see the line printing the tree in order, it should show all of these key values starting at the lowest value and ending at the very highest value in order from lowest to highest. So let's just go ahead and save all three of our files here. So I'm gonna save that one, I'll save that one, saving that one. And then we'll go ahead and open up our terminal and we'll compile this, push enter. It looks like there's no problems. So if we type the ls command, we can see that we've got this output file here, a.out. This is the executable file that's created when I compile our project here. So to run it, I'm just going to do dot forward slash a.out. And so now we see the first message, printing the tree in order before adding numbers. It goes and it looks and it says, okay, the tree is empty. Here's the second print message saying printing the tree in order again. This time it's after adding numbers. And as you can see, it goes ahead and it displays all of the key values that we added in order from lowest to highest. I guess one more thing I could do really quick before 
we take off here is I'll just go ahead and put a new line here really quick and uh, go ahead and save that, compile this one more time, and then I'll run it in there. That put a new line right here. So now this goes down to the next line. So it looks a little bit nicer. So it looks like our project is working perfectly well right now. So let's go ahead and keep working on this in the next video. Uh, so stay tuned for the next tutorial. We'll see you guys later. Have an excellent day. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.